Lane swaps were a major tactic perfected in Season 5 and are currently having a resurgence in Season 14, almost 10 years later, mostly due to tough matchups in the bot lane. Some of you may be too young to be around since the days of old, or some of you played through that era, but Alzheimer's is a hell of a disease double lift. So I'm here to explain how a lane swap works and walk you through some modern and historical references. Let's go on a journey, not to season 5, but actually all the way back to season 3, largely where it all began. We're at Worlds 2013, TSM versus SKT. TSM have drafted Rumble for Dyrus. This is critical because Rumble in these days was a low econ top laner. I guess he still is to some degree, which is why we're even seeing him being played as a support. So TSM have more flexibility to run a lane swap in this scenario since Rumble is one of the best low econ top laners. So what TSM want to do is run the Rumble 1v2 because TSM certainly don't want their bot lane to go against Caitlyn Zyra which is a losing matchup for the Corky Sona. Yes, Corky was a bot laner back in the day. So what you're going to see is both teams ward the entrances to the lanes. SKT ward the top lane entrances and TSM are warding the bot lane entrances. This is so that each team can figure out where the enemy is going to put their laners and if they have lane swapped. So since both teams know that wards have been dropped, they have to run up with the minions at the last second giving away as little information as possible so that you can't do a last minute lane swap. TSM have got what they wanted and have the 1v2 situation as SKT have sent their bot lane top. You'll see each jungler take both red buff and blue buff, stealing at least one of these from the enemy jungle, then they wait to tower dive the solo laner. Now critically, watch that impact has been able to sneak into the bot lane bush and sit there, soaking up XP. Dyrus, meanwhile, hasn't even been able to approach the wave up in the top lane. Keep in mind, when a lane swap is happening, what's important isn't getting CS or gold. It's making sure your top laner can get XP. So SKT are winning in this instance because impact is getting XP. Dyrus gets zoned off of the top tier 1 turret and impact opts to stay under his turret to grab XP because he thinks he can outplay, especially since he gets level 2, which allows him to level up his stun. Impact outplays it and is able to escape, now he's ahead. We'll skip ahead slightly in this play, and Impact is level 4 to Dyrus level 1 at 5 minutes into the game. This is what lane swaps were originally about, avoiding bad matchups for your bot lane usually and seeing which team's top laner can be less useless towards the mid game. Okay. Now that I've given you a rough origin of the lane swap, let's go to a more modern version. The game here is the 2015 EU LCS aka LEC Summer Finals of Origin vs Fnatic. If you don't know, Origin is the old school team started by XPeke, one of Europe's best mid laners of all time, and this team made it to world semifinals. They're a very legendary team, and the team that Myth and Niels, now called Sven, made their name on. So here we first see the draft with Gangplank versus Lulu top and Corky and Braum for Origin versus Tristana Alistair for Fnatic. I know it's a little weird to see these champions in those positions, but Lulu was once a solo laner and you still see Corky is an ADC just like from the 2013 play. But the point is, Origin want to get GP scale and don't want him to be facing Lulu in the early laning phase as Lulu was pretty good at early levels with her harass. So Origin opt to lane swap. Now the key thing here is, is that during this time you share XP if you're near a jungle camp when it dies. So the evolution of the lane swap here is to not even run your top laner in a lane because we know he'll get the Dyrish treatment. Instead, you have him double jungle and all four members of your team go to take the turret. As you can see here, Fnatic 
weren't sure if a lane swap was actually happening, but they get confirmation with Braum inside their jungle. So Huni runs back to his bot side and starts double jungling, and Huni and Rainover get to the bot turret late. This allows Origin to get first turret, which gives bonus gold for whichever team gets first turret blood. This is the evolution of the lane swap, that instead of running your top laner to get dove, he doesn't even make that an option and instead both teams handshake and decide to grab their outer turrets and completely avoid turret dive potential. I do also want to take the time to also point out that in 2015 in the LCS Summer Finals, CLG versus TSM Game 1, CLG wore the top side entrances of TSM's top top lane because Zion Spartan picked Yasuo into Nar, which is a common counter matchup, which is Yasuo favored. So they actually want standard lanes. So this is just to quickly point out that those lessons of warding the entrances was still a thing compared to the SKT days of 2013 versus 2015. So now that you're all caught up with the history of lane swaps, why did they die out? Well, the real explanation is that Riot noticed it was completely uninteractive, pro players were dodging lane matchups, and there was a lot of handshaking at taking turrets. By the way, handshaking could be defined as both parties agreeing to a compromise or deal, and in this case, turrets on opposite sides of the map. Additionally, Riot knew that this version of the pro meta looks nothing like solo queue because a lane swap with trading turrets is basically impossible to do in solo queue without voice comms. Riot, really, that's your fault? But okay, we know why they were removed, but how were they removed? Well, first of all, you can't share XP in the jungle anymore. XP used to be shared in a small AOE around the camp dying. Now XP only goes to the person that kills the monster. This means that if you have your top laner following the jungler around, he can't soak up XP. Secondly, around patch 6.9, <laughs> nice. Riot added turret fortification, which has turrets take 35% reduced damage, except the bot lane turret, for the first 7 minutes of the game. This was later reduced to the first 5 minutes of the game, but increased to 50% damage reduction in patch 6.15. This means that even if you do a lane swap, you won't be able to take the top lane turret that easily, so the team that runs standard lanes will just have their ADC take the bot turret faster than the team that lane swapped. Additionally, since the turret plates were introduced in Season 9, every time you kill a turret plate, the turret counts how many enemies are nearby and adds extra armor and magic resist. So this means you can't just 4-man stack and try to take out the bot or top lane turret. In essence, people have realized that effectively lane swaps were dead, and there was never any point in doing them. Until Season 14. Before we get there, quick interlude here, you're probably wondering who I am at this point. My name is Azento and I make analytical content like this, deep diving with explanations of pro strategies, documentaries, interviews, and philosophical opinion pieces. So if you enjoy Pro League of Legends, subscribe here for the best content in the pro scene about the pro scene. Thanks and back to the video. So for a modern lane swap, we're going to be looking at the LPL region. Spring Split 2024 FPX versus NIP Playoffs Game 4. FPX have decided to lane swap, but critically have kept Udyr invading the enemy topside jungle. Udyr invading is very typical because he does a ton of damage level 1 with his Phoenix Stance R, and he's running Ghost, so no one can catch him. The reason why FPX wants this lane swap is because NIP are running Varus Rumble into Jinx Nautilus. Jinx Nautilus would lose mega ultra hard here, so they definitely do not want to 2v2 standard. 
Additionally, and this is also critical, FPX are red side, which is easier to tower dive and keep them off the turret because of the terrain in bot lane. So if they ran standard lanes, they would get repeatedly tower dove. Zhao Lao Hu unfortunately goes topside half HP and then gets a surprise in the top lane bush and is forced to flash away and then dies to Poppy as she cleans him up for an easy dive. NIP eventually go on to win this game. Okay, so now you're probably wondering about the specific instances in LEC with lane swaps and why they were done. Let's take a look at a really successful lane swap and what that looks like. The game is 2024 Spring Split LEC G2 versus Team BDS Playoffs Game 3. Team BDS have drafted Varus, ADC, and Ash support. Since it's double marksmen, they're obviously incredibly strong in the lane phase as they can just constantly hit you and Ash's W volley will whittle you down. G2 know this is a terrible lane to go into, so they opt to lane swap. Additionally, Zac is much more useful as a CC bot versus Aatrox actually needs items to function as a champion, so they don't mind putting their Zac as a low econ top laner. G2 send their ADC immediately top and BDS invade to try and spot any lane swap shenanigans by placing a ward at the middle of the lane. The problem is, Hansama already got to the tier 1 top lane turret, so Broken Blade fake like he's going top lane, and this makes BDS think that it's standard lanes. Adam spots the enemy ADC top and immediately starts recalling in the tri bush. Mickey X stops his greedy recall and they push him all the way out, and eventually, five entire waves die to the top turret. Now, Broken Blade is dicking around trying to disrupt what he can because he knows if he TPs to the bot lane turret, he will immediately get towered of because obviously, Volley Bear is around that side just waiting. So, he makes sure that enough time has passed before TPing to bot lane turret. The game plays out, G2 bot lane recalls and goes back top because they want to give the maximum amount of time for their Zac to grab the bot wave. They recall again because they know BDS bot lane are going top most likely. They are able to eventually go bot lane at 6 minutes and BDS finally get the standard lanes they wanted, but Yike cleverly waits in the bot lane bush for a lane gank and they are able to kill the enemy ADC as he steps out too far, and then eventually they dive the ash as well to make the entire exchange 2 for 0. So once again, G2 did this lane swap because they didn't want their bot lane to face the Varus Ash double marksman lane, and they knew that Zac is a great low econ champion that can still function as a CC bot. Okay, finally, let's address some key things here. What are commonly thought of as lane swaps, but really aren't? The Scion strat is not a lane swap. I know some ADC players that are just directed around the map by their support and don't know macro think that the Scion strat is a lane swap, but it's not. And also, T1 didn't do the Scion strat at Worlds 2023, they did it at MSI 2023 against Mad Lions. The Scion strat is when Scion helps the jungler invade and steals the enemy red buff and Krugs, allowing the jungler to hit level 3 really quickly. Meanwhile, the bot lane slow pushes in, especially against another ADC that doesn't have great wave clear like an Ezreal. Then they dive bot lane with Scion, tanking aggro, getting killed and becoming zombie Scion with his passive, and eventually getting a 2 for 1 for his team. He then revives and TPs back to his top lane. Now obviously I also need to mention the G2 vs BDS game during the 2024 LEC Spring Split Week 5 Game 1. As you can see, G2 has a Scion on their team. This doesn't mean it's just a Scion strat, 
What G2 are doing is both the Scion strat and a lane swap because they don't want their bot lane facing against Varus Ash. So they elect to lane swap. Some people think that just because four members are around this red buff area that scrims were leaked. Whatever, that's irrelevant to this conversation here. But the point is, G2 were clearly trying to do a lane swap plus Scion strat. Another instance of not a lane swap would be the funnel meta. I wrote about this in 2018 summer with my article going through how the funnel meta works. I'm not going to explain the whole strategy. Instead, go read my article if you really want to know. But long story short, you run a hyperscaling mid and a support item on your jungler. You funnel all the minions to your hyper mid and then after clearing the wave in the mid lane, you go back and double jungle and clear your jungle camps. So once again, this is not considered a lane swap and the rest of the lanes are standard. This can also not be done in the game anymore with the restrictions to the jungle item penalizing killing lane minions by giving the jungler less gold on patch 8.14. So why are lane swaps done in the modern era? Well, the theory is to still dodge bad matchups, particularly in the bot lane, but also it's to prevent tower dives. If you have a hard winning matchup, it's very easy to pull off tower dives in the modern era. People have gotten so good at juggling tower aggro and certain champs definitely make it easier. Actually, I even made a video of this last year right before Worlds discussing that League is going through a new meta called the tower dive meta and this is the reaction to that because a dive can give not only kills but also you can zone the enemy from xp and gold and you can get tower plates on top of it it's just an overall win 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 so to mitigate that loss it's much better to lane swap all right so now you know the history of lane swaps what lane swaps are supposed to do and when they are done and also some things that are definitely not lane swaps. We're expecting some amount of lane swapping at MSI this year, so be on the lookout for a lane swap whenever you see a really bad matchup, and also if teams will learn from history and start warding the jungle and lane entrances to spot a lane swap early. Back in Season 5, the game didn't have home guards, where you have increased movement speed at the start of the game from the fountain up to the river line, so we'll see how that works into the entire equation. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe for more pro analytical content like this, and catch you next time. Peace.